Hey there, my name is Derek, and this is Megan, and this is Matt, and this is Craig, and this is Mora, and we're the Homeless Gospel Choir. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for being alive and for looking at the internet. Today we're going to be ranking our favorite MCR records from least favorite to most favorite. I think sometimes in the world that we live in, people see things that happen on a larger scale, whether it's MCR or Green Day or uh, uh, even Yo Gabba Gabba, and they think that because it's commercial, that it's that it's not uh, it doesn't have the same punch. But uh, I th I think it was a uh, MCR and Green Day and, and things like that are a great. Uh, gateway tool to get kids into other punk bands that they wouldn't have otherwise found underground bands and bands that are just living there at the bottom of the record bin and um, yeah I, I think Green Day was super important to me um, in Fine and Dookie and uh, it was on a big huge major label and it was certainly uh, a very uh, uh, out in the open piece of what punk rock was and it was, a, it was a total gateway drug to me and I'm super thankful for it. If it weren't for Green Day or My Chemical Romance, I wouldn't listen to anything I liked or play music or do anything cool ever. <laughs> American Idiot got me into Green Day and got me into punk and around the same time I got into My Chemical Romance, Three Cheers. And if I didn't buy a magazine with Green Day talking about a lot of their favorite punk albums, which I went out and bought, tried to find every single one of them and buy it, I would never have been into music, really, probably, so. This is real good timing because I never listened to any of those records until this Three tour. days ago? Yeah, so my ranking will be Fresh. based on yeah. the only time I've ever heard those records. I've heard them all one time. In an effort to be amicable, um, we would like to say that Danger Days is our fourth favorite MCR album. Um, there are three more albums that we like more than that one. I did like the, con the idea for the concept and stuff like that. And I like the song Na 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 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's a good song. But then, uh, I don't know, I feel like the production was really was super pop, which I'm fine with if it's done. I one thing really one thing I really like about my Chemical Romance and the albums I really love is the guitar. And I felt like the guitar just didn't feel like production wise that present on Danger Days. Like I just felt like more of an afterthought and kinda like I didn't really like the tones and it felt more like dancey and stuff. It's just like not my thing. Like I just was like, come on, you know, everything I love is like the like, you know, the yeah, sharp guitar playing and the like, kind of like oomph and stuff, and I just didn't feel like that was there. It's not as dark. I what I think I liked a lot of the, the dark aesthetic of my Chemical Romance and the theatrics. Like you can tell that they really love musicals and and really ridiculous things like Iron Maiden. Um, and then with Danger Days, that kind of dropped off. It's still a really well produced pop album, but it was like a complete departure from what they were doing before. Um, and that was why it was hard for me and to for get me, into it. For me, because like I said, it was all first listen. That one was the only one that like all the structures were, were pretty predictable. Yeah. Like, once you heard what the song was up to, it never really changed gears the, like mm -hmm. the old records. Yeah, thing. yeah. The na 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 na
um, and to to write some really great pop punk songs. I think the songs on that album are good. I think they're really really good. Um, I think they're fun. I think they're engaging. I think there's there's they're super like um, operatic in many ways. And um, I, I like that record a whole bunch. I'm not saying that that record is a three of four. Like it only gets it only gets you know two of four stars. There's just two records that they made that I think are better. Which if you really like Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, there's two more records that they made that are actually better than that record. Believe it or not. Hey, I think emo- I agree with Derek as a whole. I guess if I was detaching the emotional so, aspect of it. But Three Cheers for me was really influential, but I do agree, like, I don't think the concept is as tight as, like, Black Parade was, which is why I would say that I, I, I do agree with the third place spot. Mm. But High five. personally for me, it's second. <laughs> That's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like asking a group of people, what's the best flavor? Definitely nostalgically and like, it's hard for me to detach myself from that aspect because that was the one that I got into first and I was like really like the most soaked on that one always. Like I kind of fell off during Black Parade, but like I just think that they took what they had before, which was like the kind of spooky, smithsy, but like, you know, rock and glam rock kind of thing and they, made it more poppy, and I just think the songs are really great. I don't even know if I'd say it was like, uh, like overarchingly it's the, their number one album they've done, like it's their best one, but it's my favorite one. It, it has one, the it best bridges. Like the, it does have the best bridges. It has the best bridges. Yeah. The best bridges it, was, it had the best structures. Yeah, like, yeah, structuring so. was awesome, mm-hmm. yeah. It has interesting dynamic changes in all the different songs, yeah. in my opinion. The second half really rips. Yeah. The bridge for the jet set life is gonna kill you. you fucking rocks it. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> sure? Hang him high. That's my, oh, yeah, that's that's my fave. Too. I would have to go ahead and as a as as a spokesperson for the band and <laughs> using everybody's ideas and melding them into one idea, I would say that the second best MCR record is the Bullets album, which is their first album. I brought you my bullets, you brought me your love. I brought you my bullets, you brought me your love will be ranked as number two as the second greatest MCR record. Um, I think that it's great for a number of different reasons. I think it's super gritty and I think it's super fast and it definitely grabs your attention like really, really quick. Um, I, We all agreed with in this in the van when we were listening to it. I like how confident Gerard Way was at the very, very beginning to like say this is how I'm gonna sound and I'm gonna go for it. And like, I think it was incredibly brave and like, very well done. Like, I, I, from the from the from the from the from the onset, like this is how the vocals are going to sound, and it's going to have this type of like intensity and this type of like pacing. And I think it's I think it was really smart. And really well done. For me, bullets is number one all the way. Uh, however, I agree in this order of ranking, though. Like overall, but emotionally, bullets is the best. Got early sunsets of Monroeville and That's Drowning right. Lessons. Those two songs are fucking tight. That album changed my life. Before Frank Iero and I were friends, he um, he would call me all the time and ask me questions about Monroeville. And um, this isn't a true story. This is just a dream. Monroeville, Ohio. Um, no, um, that's where that's where that's where the Monroeville Mall, the Monroeville Mall, and all the zombies and George Romero and Dawn of the Dead were. And that song's about that. And and, and Frank actually wrote the guitar part on that song. I really like he, that Yeah, song. he wrote the really the. the Dun, 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 dun. And Frank did the ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that's what they said in life. And yeah, yeah. Talk about the board game. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, I Megan. created a board game when I was a kid that traveled through the different phases of each song and like moved from bullets into three cheers. Uh, me and my friend Kate, we we created that as children. And it was cool, and I don't know what happened to it. The nerddom so, is thick, Megan like a tapioca like pudding. Yeah. I definitely drew a picture when I was like 13 of vampires will never hurt you. I like drew some guy that looks like a vampire <laughs> and like a like like a highway like yeah baby. sunset background thing. Um, so I love that album too. It's really I actually think the production is like really awesome on that one. Like I like that it's more raw. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's technically the best one, maybe. Even though I just said three cheers to my favorite. <laughs> Crap. 
Craig, it's, you gotta say something. I have no idea. <laughs> Craig has, like, matter, so I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> okay. Craig, great. I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> Craig's <laughs> too punk. No. <laughs> uh, the number one greatest MCR record of all time is a record called 24 Hour Revenge Therapy, and we love it so much. Um, <laughs> the greatest MCR record is uh, Black Parade, by a mile, in my opinion. Um, I, I love show tunes, and I love musicals, and I love Liza Minnelli. punk That's rock, I <laughs> and Liza I Minnelli, love, baby. I just love the feel of it. I love the story, and I love to get wrapped up in like the narrative of it, and now as an older punk, I'm not anywhere close to being ashamed to say that record fucking rules, and it's so well put together, and it's such a good story arc, and it, uh, all the components of it are super smart and super well put together. No wonder it sold a quadrillion copies, because it's fucking awesome. Um, it's a it's it's an amazing piece of work and like it, it's engaging and it's thought provoking and the songwriting is the best and that's why it's the best record in my opinion and I think in the opinion of others in the band perhaps I hope it's crazy it's I agree over emotionally it's more like third for me but uh, I agree it's probably their best um, the amount of work that they put into a single song <coughs> on that record is the amount of work people put into entire albums and then there's like <laughs> yeah. what, like 11 songs or something on there and they're all insane Liza Minnelli's on there it sounds like Queen fucking crawled through hell it's tight <laughs> yeah I really like that description <laughs> sounds like Lee Miz yeah yeah it's really cool yeah it's sounds a like Brecken Vile for a second yeah. I think it's, it's like technically cool. the best one yeah yeah it's like sure. I actually hadn't listened to it, even though I was like a pretty big MCR fan when I was younger, and still am, but I hadn't listened to it until recently Megan played it for me, and I was like, what was wrong with me? It's so good. I just went through a period where I was like, yeah. I'm like punk, I'm like, I'm too cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of kids go through that, where you, for a second, you're like, I don't like that thing that I like, because like, <laughs> it's not cool. Yeah. It's more like radio-esque now, but then like, I'm like, it's amazing. I missed out. Aww. Singer, he had the best. Uh, he was a superstar as soon as that band started. What's his name? Gerard. Gerard Way. Yeah. <laughs> he did the best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now rank all the members of my group. I mean, I'm a, I'm a loyalist, so I'm a Frank Iero through and through. Before I was a fan of My Chemical Romance, I was a fan of Frank Iero because we're buds. And we're all buds with Frank now because we're the same band together! And it rules! <laughs> um, but yeah, Frank's the coolest. And he likes good punk rock and he plays guitar super duper good. And he's not a fucking poser. And like he really, he really, um, he really works hard to craft really, really good songs. And it's evident even in his current material that he's putting out with his own bands. I think those songs are fucking smashes. And um, I love Frank the best. I love you, buddy. Hope you're doing good over there in Jersey. <laughs> I I can't actually physically do this. I can't do <laughs> that. They all bring things that are important to the table. But if if we're all, I'm gonna choose a different one. I'm gonna say Ray Toro because he fucking shreds on the guitar and he makes crazy guitar parts and does crazy transitions and he has the hair of a god. I think I'd probably say Ray Toro too. I don't know. I I mean when I was younger. Frank yeah. was like, like I definitely, I like forgot that I did this, but for a long time, like my first electric guitar was like a white Epiphone Les Paul that had like the gold, you know, details on it. And I pretty sure I got it because he had that guitar. Yeah. So it was like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> culturally influential, but I think Ray is like, whatever, they're all cool. Just say Mikey Way into the camera. Mikey Way. <laughs> <laughs> For the last 10 years, I've just been on tour by myself just with my guitar, singing songs just acoustically. And I struggled with feeling okay about continuing to do that. I wanted to make something that was different. I wanted to make something that was new. And in writing these new songs, um, Matt and I got together um, and we started to formulate and write some songs that sounded differently and felt differently. And we showed them to Chris too. Um, from Anti Flag, and said, This is the feel that we want to make. And we decided to put um, put a band together and like 
try and show people a different version of the song. I'm not saying that I'll never write another acoustic song ever again, or that's out of me completely, but I just wanted to, com I wanted to try something different. I wanted to make something that was loud, and I wanted to make something that was faster, and I wanted to do that with people that I loved and trusted. So I, um, so we put together this, we got, we, we made this band together, and the Homeless Gospel Choir is no longer just a, a solo acoustic thing, and it's a, it's a full live, loud, ruckus, loud, ruckus, punk loud and ruckus and punk band yeah. and wow. uh, yeah it's super great in the spring of 2020 there will be a new homeless gospel choir record put out on af records right here in the united states of america and uh, hassle is going to do it over there in uh, europe and the uk and we're just going to tour our butts off and play a whole bunch of gigs we have a lot of stuff lined up a lot of really cool opportunities and we're just super thankful that people still uh, give a shit about punk rock and that people want to hear it and they're coming out to the gigs the shows on this tour have been awesome and we're excited to keep the ball rolling and have a, have a new record out for y'all there's a song on the new record that we're not playing live yet it's called Lest We Forget I think it is super important um, it's a super important song and I can't wait for you to hear it there's all these outside pressures and there's all these outside things infiltrating your mind trying to convince you that of things that aren't real or things that aren't true um, and I, I think lest we forget is a way to remind you that um, some of those things are just in your head some of those some of those voices that they're not real and they're, they're pressures that other people have put on you and they're from outside forces that don't have anything to do with you or your life and don't speak to you about anything about you or your life and, and making sure to silence those things and, and feed yourself with um, uh, friends and family and more positive interactions. I think if you want to make a good punk record, I think you should listen to, um, I think you should listen to Green Day, and I think you, if you want to write good songs, I think you should listen um, to The Promise Ring, and I think if you want to feel the best inside your heart, I think you should listen to Jimmy Eat World. What else? Do you what think? about They Might Be Giants? They Might Be Giants. Flood. Listen to They Might Be Giants. Listen to that album. Listen to B-52s. Pinkerton. Pinkerton by Weezer. Get a good guitar tone. Listen to uh, listen to listen to Pinkerton. Hips don't lie by Shakira. For your dance moves. <laughs> yeah. We yes. all have to say that. No, I mean, <laughs> we, we should try to all say it at the same okay. time. Okay. Yeah, let's all go for it. Uh, well, wait, no, we don't know we're fresh, so Let's well, just try it right now. We're just gonna do it. And it's gonna be. It's just gonna be live, and it's gonna be chaotic. Wait. We're, we're the, the homeless, homeless gospel, gospel choir. For, for more, more videos from, from your all of your favorite, favorite artists, please, please subscribe to APTV. Dot so com. It's on the internet. Subscribe. Go to the internet. It's everywhere. Don't YouTube. talk about Fight Club. Ever. <laughs> no, you have to. We're stuck here. And if we uh, talk about Fight Club, they won't let us out. <laughs> AP has trapped us until we talk, until we about, talk about Fight Club. Fight Club. <laughs>